Hello everyone, welcome to the Red Take. Let's get started. So now, um, as you know, it's time to go over my um, college football predictions for this week. Um, do we talk about the rankings that came out real quick? I'm fine with the um, Alabama State 2, Oregon moved up 3, Ohio State moved up to 4 after Michigan State loss. Um, even though those teams are impressive in their wins, at least they all won, I like Michigan State. Um, so I'm fine with how the ranked tough war is played out right now. Um, cause you know, it'll shake us up out later on. I don't get why Michigan State with the, with one loss, like Michigan's behind them, but, um, it could be, you know, like a good explanation, but, oh well. Um, but yeah, so there's a tons of good games on paper this week. And there's like a couple that I could have mentioned that didn't even my top 10. So there's a lot of good games on paper this week. So I'm looking forward to it. Um, even though unfortunately I'll be busy, but I'm going to try to catch what I can. Um, but let's get started. So my top game of the week, you got... Eight Oklahoma versus thirteen Baylor, a uh, need Fox game. Um, now I know Baylor's coming off the upset loss to TCU, um, so they don't have as good mojo coming in. And Oklahoma's coming off a bye week, you know, when you give um, good teams, especially offensive minded coaches, you know, like the like a bye week, you know, that could usually spell disaster. And I do think you know Oklahoma will have their some offense, but I do feel like at home uh, with the way Baylor plays. Um, and the physicality, um, I feel like that could kind of set Oklahoma off because um, they haven't really faced any, um, except maybe, you know, Nebraska, just be, although they're not, you know, that physical, but because they're in the Big Ten the way they are, that's, you know, obviously the most physical team they've played so far, maybe. Maybe West Virginia where they barely struck, maybe something like that, but Baylor's definitely going to be the most physical team they've played so far. I feel like I'm going to kind of throw them off a little bit. And especially on the road and all that. So I do feel like Baylor will actually um, get the episode here to provide some more chaos, if you will. Um, and I have Baylor um, winning 34-30. Um, then you got Texas A&M. Um, 11 Texas A&M versus 15 Ole Miss. Um, now this one's interesting here. Because um, the and game day is going to be at this one. This one for me is super hard to predict because I want to say that, you know, home field advantage matters and all that. Um, and Ole Miss, you know, has the offense to kind of slow down this Texas defense, which is pretty good. Um, but, I do, but I do feel like that Texas A&M will kind of play a style where they'll be able to run the ball, especially since Ole Miss's defense ain't that great. And since they're not that great, it means – They'll be able to run the ball, mill clog, you know, keep Matt Corral on the sidelines and all that, uh, which makes things hard. So I don't feel like it'll be a shootout by any means. Um, but I do feel like, um, in the end, I do feel like Ole Miss will finally pull it out. Um, so I have Ole Miss winning in this game 21-20 in a close one, although I can definitely admit I could be wrong there. Um, next, you got 6 Michigan versus Penn State. Um, I, I am calling an upset right here. There's a reason why the line for this one, by a corner of Vegas is even, like it's kind of a toss up game. Um, I feel like Penn State's defense can limit Michigan's offense. So it just comes down to, okay, now what Penn State's offense can do against Michigan's defense. Well, the answer is not much, but I do feel like with the home field advantage and crowd and all that, as we saw, that was a factor with Michigan State against Michigan. Um, I do feel that would be a factor. And I feel like their defense can contain Michigan enough to where Penn State just has to make you know, a few clutch plays to win. So I do feel like Penn State will actually get the upset here. The money twenty three twenty. Um, fourth, you got sixteen NC State versus twelve Lake Forest. So basically, the winner of this matchup will go to the ACC championship game. Um, and um, for either team, that's pretty much an accomplishment when you know Clemson usually goes every single year. Um, I feel like this is an interesting game because NC State, while they can score, NC State's more for their defense efforts, and Wake Forest is clearly known for the offense efforts. So it's interesting to see which one's going to give in here. Um, I do feel like that um, with Wake Forest being at home, getting you know embarrassed, especially defensively uh, by North Carolina, all that, I feel like they're going to come out more motivated and all that, and more buttoned up. So I do feel like they're going to get the win here in a close game at the winning 31-27. But you got 19 Purdue versus 4 Ohio State. Now, as Purdue has upset both um, Iowa and Michigan State, 
Can Purdue knock off another top 25 team in an upset? Although at this point with NBA right, it's not that much of an upset, but obviously if they beat Ohio State, Ohio State is pretty good. Um, but I do feel like Purdue can make this somewhat competitive. I mean, keep it close, maybe a little scary, but I do feel like Ohio State with their talent in the end will just be um, too much. So I would have Ohio State winning this game, and I have them winning 34-20. Now, if this was at Purdue, different story, but since it's at home, that's why I have them winning by two touchdowns. Um, so you got Mississippi State, 5-4 versus 17 Auburn. Um, now, Mississippi State, um, they basically lost the game where they should have won. They had a good field goal kicker. And then for Auburn, you know, they're coming off a horrible game against ANET, but ANET has a good defense, so I'm not going to – so I'm not going to um, – be very concerned that Auburn lost. So I'm going to have Auburn bounce back actually in this game and and get the win, although um, once again being competitive, but I'm going to miss the state's like a field goal kicking issues be the issue there. So I have Auburn going 24-14. Next, you got Washington State right, versus 3 Oregon, um, the late night on ESPN. Um, I actually feel like Washington State could be competitive this game. You know, they were competitive with BYU. You know, they dismantled Arizona State, which, which you know is a very good team. It could be a, you know, top 35 team, top 30 team by the end of the year. Um, and they're playing well, you know, despite role of, you know, being terminated and all that. Um, so I do feel like Washington State could be competitive here. And that's exactly the case. I feel like Oregon's going to have to work for it. And they're going to have to scrap and claw their way for a win. Um, and it'll be barely bad. Oregon surviving here 28-24. Um, next, you got nine Notre Dame versus Virginia. This is a, now this game kind of depends on stuff. So Virginia's quarterback, um, Brandon Armstrong, one of the best quarterbacks in the country, got injured in the last game, um, and then they had a bye this past week, um, and it's a rib injury. So I'm not sure if he's playing, how how healthy he is. I mean, if he's not playing, Notre Dame should win this game easily. But if Virginia, if that quarterback Brandon Armstrong does play, and you know they can. Um, be somewhat productive, and I do feel like Virginia has a chance to stop so Notre Dame here at home because their offense is just that explosive. Now, defensively, they can't stop a cold. So, you know, Notre Dame and their running back, Kyron kind of Williams, like they'll have a good running game and they'll they'll score a lot. It's just can Virginia score enough with them is the question. In this case, I feel like uh, they can keep it close in the first half, and then the second half they'll start to pull away. So I have Notre Dame winning and surviving 49-31. My last game, this one's a little off the radar, but it's a G5 matchup here. you got Nevada versus 22 San Diego State. Um, and the reason why this is a poor matchup is because the winner of this game will most likely um, be in the... It's basically whoever wins this game will go to the Mountain West title game um, to face most likely Utah State. And whoever wins this game out of favor in the matchup against Utah State to win the Mountain West. And why does that matter? Well, I mean, this is not probably going to happen, but let's say for some reason... If Cincinnati does not win their conference championship game, then it's the next best G5 team gets to go to New Year's Six Bowl game, which would be either UTSA, or I feel like the winner of this game, and the winner of the Mount West in general. Um, so that's a lot to be playing for. But then even for some reason, Cincinnati wins out like they should, then for the Mount West, you know, you have the LA Bowl, which they get to face a Pac-12 opponent, the pretty good bowl and all that. But the rest of the Mount West Bowl sucks, so... Um, it's still a lot to play for. Um, San Diego State's a very good defense team, but Nevada's a very good offense team. So it's interesting to see, to see which one gets in there. And I have, um, and this is at San Diego State, so it's going to be tough for Nevada, but I do feel like for some reason, it's just that gut feeling that Nevada will pull off the upset here with the better quarterback. So, um, Nevada winning in a very close game, 19-17. Um, so now, real quick, I want to go over, um, talk about Odell Beckham Jr. and his um, potential destinations. For me, there's top five destinations that you should go to. One is the Raiders. only reason why this number one is because of Rugs not being on the team anymore. With him gone, the Raiders need a deep threat. Odell can provide that. And the Raiders should be in the playoffs uh, unless they have a collapse. Because so Odell's wanting to be on the playoff contender, so there's that. Um, and plus, with him having an L.A. home, Vegas is close to LA, so I feel like that's he'd be a good fit there just in general because we all knew he was never going to fit in Cleveland uh, personality wise and all that. So I feel like Raiders is a good choice. Um, Saints is second. Um, now, they're not going to win a Super Bowl by any means, but they at least make the playoffs and they desperately need that wide receiver help. Also, um, he's good, he'd be an easy division now, Atlanta, Carolina. 
Um, but then also he played his college ball at LSU. So going to Louisiana and all that, and he likes it. So that's one choice there. There is the Packers, which let's remember to be the big one right now. Um, we all know Aaron Rodgers too, um, Devontae Adams and Cobb Reliant. So having Odell there, we good. Now Odell wouldn't be the number one receiver here. Like it would be another um, two, as I just mentioned above, and plus what are all that? So I'm not. So is he really to kind of risk all that? They're not just to be you know there in Rodgers, but we'll see. Um, it's not a bad choice there if he has to go cold weather, Super Bowl contender, and um, loaded offense. It's not a bad choice. Fourth is the Patriots. Now the Patriots need desperate help as well, but like if you're going to be be on a cold weather team, you know, with a with a good head coach and all that, and good fan base, then you know the Packers would be the option there. But you know. If he wants like an easier round than the Patriots beat um, to the Super Bowl, the Patriots would probably be the easier round being the AFC. And then last but not least, my fifth option would be the Chiefs. You know, I know the Holmes is Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey and all that, but besides those two, like the other receivers, you know, whether it's Pringle or Robinson, they're they're not producing much. So they need Odell to kind of fix that, and maybe they'll fix their offense in general. So that would be my fifth option. And then a couple dark horse options. A lot, a lot of people say the Rams, and I know it's because he has a house and all that, but. The Rams is a team that's just not a good option. They have plenty of receivers. They do not need them, nor does he need them. So a couple of dark horse options, Seahawks, you know, because Russell Wilson always is looking for good wide receivers to add on. Um, Ravens, Ravens could use another guy besides Hollywood Brown. And um, as the rookies kind of in and out of the line of doing injuries. Um, Colts, desperately need another wide receiver. Now, I'm not sure if they're playoff contenders, so you probably will pick them. That's like a very dark, dark horse guy out there. Also, 49 as well. They could use receivers, set in their dark horse, and that's California and all that. If he was to pick a California team, but again, those are dark horse options. So I would say probably won't be any of those options, but just you never know. Um, also, I wanted to say real quick that college basketball sorry already started. It's been pretty fun to watch so far. So if you haven't watched it yet, um, I know we got college football going on right now, which is good, and also obviously the NFL and the NBA as well. But don't forget to watch some college basketball as well. Um, so thank you very much for listening to my podcast today. Please subscribe to my channel. Tell me about me. Thank you very much. And y'all have a wonderful day.